In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a song like Pretty Lights, Grizz, Grammatic, and a lot of these other electro hip hop, glitch hop, and future funk artists. Here is an example song I made, so I'm just going to play it. So let's jump right into the tutorial. I hate wasting people's time. When it comes to tracks like this, here's the main formula. They take samples, so typically other people's work, add in their own stuff, and that equals the song. Now I did do a video about the legal aspects of sampling. I have a link listed below in the description. I suggest watching that video after this one, just because sampling can bring out some unique legal elements. Here's a sample I got off Splice Sounds. I thought it was easier just to get it on Splice 1. It's just quicker to download it on there. And two, I don't have to worry about the potential legal infractions with sampling someone else's work. So this is the original sample I used for the song. I'm just going to show you it. So the first thing I did is sped it up. I just felt it sounded too slow, right? And obviously some pretty light songs, for example, are a bit slower, but this one I want to be a bit faster and more upbeat, more similar to a total fascination type vibe. So the first thing I did is I'm gonna go to warp. I'm gonna just hit no. So what I'm doing now is taking this sample that's originally at 70 BPM, speeding it up to 105 BPM. Now it sounds like this. So I'm like, all right, now that's kind of the speed that I want. The next thing I did was transpose it. So this is in C minor. This song itself is actually in E minor. I felt like it sounded a bit better and more pretty lights-ish, having it be a bit higher pitched. So I went down here to pitch, put it up four. So I'm going up four semitones from C minor to E minor. And now it sounds like this. So now I have the sample that I want in the right BPM and the right key signature. I want to say as a quick side note, there are many different ways to do this. This is just my own personal strategy. Next thing you want to do is cut it up. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'll show you mainly two. The first is I'm going to create a MIDI track. This is in Ableton. You can do this in pretty much any DAW. I'm going to click this and I'm going to move it into the MIDI area. So now Ableton is treating this sample more like an instrument than just an audio sample right here so now i can go down to here and click slice now i can actually play this as if it's an instrument even if you don't have like say an mpc pad where you're like hitting it like this i can so do right and at this point now i can literally play this like an instrument so i can go right and i can mess around here Sounds actually a bit Daft Punkish. When it comes to One More Time by Daft Punk, one of the best EDM songs ever made, they did do a lot of sampling like this, but this is how you can kind of mess around and start like playing it on the keyboard, so to speak. I can even add in notes as if I'm creating a melody and do that with this as well, right? This is where you can mess around. In addition, I can do this, but I can also move this marker right here. So that's one way to do it. The second way, which is a bit more manual, but I personally like this better, I'm going to delete this, is to actually chop it up. So I'm going to zoom in when it comes to the fixed grid on, like, say, 132. And now I can take this. I'm going to create, actually, a new audio track. So now I'm just going to play different parts of it just to see, like... So I like that. So I might even just copy and paste this, right? So I'm literally just, like, just like puzzle pieces, copy and pasting it in so I can do... Oh, that sounds kind of cool. I kind of like that. So I could do like... All right, so I like that right there. And then let's go back up here. So as you can see, kind of this is how the process works. Uh, let's do this. Uh, no, let's go here. All right, so I'm just making this up, right, as an example melody. So you can kind of see where this is starting to kind of formulate an actual melody. So after doing that, I'm gonna kind of X out that, and this is the one I came up with, so I'm just gonna play it. So 
So when it comes to this song specifically, as you can see, I started off with that. Just that little riff right here in terms of the sampling. Now it's time to add in my own elements. First thing I did was add in drums. This is just a drum loop I got on Splice, so I'm just going to play this so you can hear it. Typically, I'd say when it comes to their songs, you want to have more organic drums than EDM E sounding drums, if that makes sense. For this one, though, it's a bit in the middle. It sounds kind of organic, but there's also some synthetic elements to it. But in the mix, it sounded good. So now I have this. Gonna solo these. So now I have this. Now, what Pretty Lights, Grammatic, Grizz, uh, Big Gigantic, all these artists do is they then add in their own elements. So I have this huge group down here. I use, as you can see a lot, Massive for a lot of these sounds. When it comes to EDM right now, Serum is the biggest synthesizer. Massive is kind of like an old school synth along with like Silent and other ones. But I actually found for this particular record, it had more of that old school synth vibe. And I actually think that fit better than almost the new school synth sound, if that makes sense. So what I did is I have a bunch of sounds from Massive, only one from Serum, ironically, and then I created my own melody. So I'm gonna solo this without anything else. You can hear it. So it sounds like this now. Obviously this isn't perfect. It's just kind of like a work in progress, like a fun little thing I threw together, but you can kind of see how it has that kind of funky, glitchy, type vibe. So a big pro tip I suggest is when doing a song like this, mute your sample itself, right? So now I only have drums in the elements that I added. If it sounds good without the sample, that is a great sign that it's going to sound good together. So now when I play it, Now, when it comes to the grouping itself, I just had a saturator on here, the sausage fattener, and OTT to help bring everything together. This is a huge pro tip because when you have a bunch of different types of sounds, an OTT is a great kind of like quick fix to make them sound more in the same category. So if I do this, you're gonna notice a vast difference. Right, they almost sound more random, but if I do this now, and I have the OTT on, I'm at 84%. They sound a bit more in the same arena, if that makes sense. I think it just makes it a bit cleaner. I added some reverb, and I might as well say as well, I don't really have anything on the drum rack and then on the sample itself. I just low cut it, pretty straightforward. So with all that being added, you know, let's say if I was working on the song, obviously this is just, again, a random riff I made. With everything added, it sounds like this. Yeah. 